We are almost at the midpoint of the NHL season, and it's time to talk about the mid-season surge. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Locked On NHL Power Rankings. It is your host, Nick Zararis. I am holding it down while Hunter Hodes is traveling. And before we get to today's episode, got to remind everybody that today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So on today's edition of the Power Rankings, we are going to talk about the latest round of Power Rankings that are voted on by the Locked On NHL hosts. We'll start there. We'll talk a little bit about the All-Star game, who's to, who should be going representing certain teams. And then our closing segment today, we are going to talk about some teams that are going to have to start making decisions about how they're going to improve their rosters because they are running out of time to go on the type of midseason surge that's necessary to get out of whatever hole you put yourself in that first half of the season. There are a handful of teams that expected to be a lot further along in the standings than they are right now. You look at some of the teams, especially in the Metro, we talk about the Penguins and the Devils, two teams in particular that expected to be amongst, definitely above that cut line, firmly struggling, entrenched in the bottom half of their respective divisions we talk about a team like the oilers who has have slowly but surely started to dig themselves out of the hole they started out in and then they fired jay woodcroft and chris knoblock got in there and they've slowly but surely started to turn things around but today starting off our power rankings conversation i'm going to pull them up here if you're watching along on youtube you'll see them on screen now the big jump this week, noticeable, the Carolina Hurricanes, who have slowly but surely started to scrape themselves off of the mat. The Hurricanes did not get off to the most auspicious of starts. They really struggled to find what had been their identity the last number of years under Rod Brindamore, that strong defensive style that's extremely frustrating to play against, that forces the other team into mistakes. And over the last few weeks, they have put together a nice little 5-1-1 one, one streak in their last seven games. They're averaging over four goals a game in that span. The big key here to understanding why Carolina has started to turn it around is this stat here. A 9-15 save percentage in all situations, include so that's special teams and five-on-five, over those last seven games, goaltending has been their has been their Achilles heel. You know they expected to have a duo of Freddie Anderson and Antti Ranta. Freddie Anderson, of course, suffering from blood clots, has not played in quite a while this season. The Hurricanes are unsure if and when he will return this season. Period or court. Kochetkov, I want to make sure I pronounce his name correctly, has gotten, uh, excuse me, Kochetkov has gotten six of the last seven starts for the Hurricanes. He has won three of those and he has won overtime loss. I, I'm misreading my notes here. He has made five of the last seven starts. He's three, one, and one in those set five starts. When you start to get even good goaltending, when you've had bad goaltending, that goes a long way in turning your season's fortunes around. The Hurricanes are getting their best string of goaltending all season. I, I pulled up the um, the rolling averages on Evolving Wild, which if you're not familiar with, is an invaluable resource if you're in the hockey community to get a deeper understanding of the game. And when you look at things like their rolling averages and you see, oh, they were on a five game losing streak when their goaltending was at the worst point it was all season. But now they've got five one and one in their last seven and goaltending is whoop, way up there on that curve above league average. It's really easy to understand how they're able to put things together. And I think the deciding factor for a lot of people when it came to voting this week was. They saw the Hurricanes steamroll the Rangers on Tuesday night. And as somebody who was there in attendance at Madison Square Garden on Tuesday, I can tell you that was a buck kicking. The Rangers really tried to swim against the current and it did not go well for them. You, you know how you go to the beach and you see those signs about trying don't swim against the riptide. You got to swim parallel to it, out of it, and then you can start coming back to shore. The Rangers kept paddling and paddling and paddling as furiously as they could against the riptide and they weren't making any progress and the Hurricanes bludgeoned them, forced them into all kinds of mistakes and that's when Carolina's at their best. They play a very simple style of high 
hockey that's replicable that they can do over and over and over again until they wear the other team out and frustrate them to a point that they only make mistakes. I mean, you don't lose 5-1 in the NHL when you play a good game. You, you don't. And the Hurricanes, are when they're on, are able to force teams into a lot of mistakes. Moving along here. Big drop off in the Metropolitan Division, the New Jersey Devils, who I I cannot figure out what the Devils need to do beyond the goaltending because their goaltending has been bad. Make no mistake about it. They've got an 8 eight eight oh six save percentage in their last seven games this season for the whole year their 879 save percentage which is well below league average league average is 899 so the devils are a supremely talented hockey team nobody's in disagreement there timo meyer dinged up he missed their game the other day dougie hamilton indeterminate when he will return but they've been bolstered by the debuts of both simon nemec and luke hughes who have acclimated themselves pretty comfortably and look they look ready for the nhl but when you are dealing with goaltending that is this subpar it is really hard to string together good games because you're on the goalie coaster when you're constantly in the goalie roller coaster if you're watching on youtube you're seeing me make a roller coaster motion with my pen if you're listening along you'll 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 have to you'll have to imagine what that looks like but the the devils have yet to really put it all together the other stat i found interesting about the devils they have played 14 games against playoff teams, that teams that are currently in playoff spots right now. They are 5-7-2 and two in those games. Nine losses, two of them in overtime, yes. But against better teams, the Devils have had a harder time, which that's not always a stinging, a stinging indictment of your team that you struggle against good teams. Sometimes you're just the best good, not great team, and you beat all the teams you're supposed to, but when push comes to shove and you got to play the teams that are better than you, you just can't do it. You know, that happens. There, There is always going to be a pecking order in the league, but when you are consistent, when you had the expectations the Devils do, and they have the room, the flexibility, the opportunity to improve the, their team the way they do, they need to make a move, especially to solidify that position in net. I wouldn't be surprised if they went out, out and added a defenseman. We will circle back around the Devils in our third segment. The last point we really should hit on here, well, two, we'll be quick. Two teams out in the Western Conference, the Winnipeg Jets break up the, Columb- the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's embarrassing. The Colorado Avalanche, excuse me. Words are hard sometimes. I'm tired. Excuse me, if you will. They broke up. The Jets did. The Monopoly, the Avalanche, and the Stars have had in that Central Division in the power rankings the jets one of the more compelling stories this season they get reinforcements they turn pierre luc dubois into alex iafalo and sean jersey they have really both acclimated themselves well they have survived quite admirably i should say without kyle connor who was injured a number of weeks ago with a knee injury and Vili hinola who's been out for a number of weeks now since he got hit in the face but where we're looking at it from a jets perspective Connor Hellebuck still amongst the league's best. Connor Hellebuck has a, I should say the Jets do, excuse me. In their last seven games, Connor, the Jets have a 9-3-6 save percentage. That is second in the entire league during that window. They have also had a massive spike in both shooting percentage and expected goals over the last week and a half, two weeks. So not a surprise you're going to see a team go, rattle off a 5-0-2 when you've got the strong goaltending and the shooting luck coming back around. And real quick, to get in under the wire here before we move along the the vancouver canucks finally get that number one spot out in the pacific division for the first time in a while the canucks are one of the best stories in the nhl not as good over the last couple weeks four one and two in their last seven games 882 save percentage during that window so a lot of people expected thatcher demko to cool off because he was playing at you know a Sorokin last year or Shesterkin two years ago kind of pace. And it's just really hard to maintain that over the course of a long season. But the Canucks have more than leveraged themselves enough breathing room that even if they only play 500 hockey the rest of the way, they will more than likely than not end up in the postseason. And we are going to talk a little bit about the All-Star Game guys who might be representing their respective teams in a moment. And we will be right back. It is just about that halfway point in the NHL season, hockey fans. And if you are riding the coaster of a team like the Devils, the Penguins, the Islanders, a team that's in that middle area, it's about time 
to try and win big playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. What hockey players would I take if I was trying 100 times my money? I'm looking at those certified bankable stars. Kale McCarr, Nathan McKinnon, Sidney Crosby, Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner. The list goes on and on, but when you are betting your hard-earned money, you are going to want to look at those stars around the league. The fun part about Sleeper is how easy it is to use their app. There is no confusion. There is no, there is no, un, there is no difficult interface to figure out. Sleeper has the most intuitive interface of any of the daily fantasy sports apps. All you have to do is pick whether stars like Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, Connor Bedard, Nathan McKinnon will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win 100 times your bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, NHL fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your pick so you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit terms and conditions apply that's code locked on nhl the sleeper see sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability thanks everyone for hanging out with us today i want to remind everybody that locked on has launched the first ever 24 7 streaming sports channel on youtube locked on 24 7 where we have all of the experts from various channels and the national shows giving you the most important information that you need to be the most educated sports fan you possibly can to show up all your friends in an argument because let's be honest that's the reason all of us consume sports content we want to one-up our friends when we're having arguments that's really the ethos of why I do what I do. And we are just about at that point now. I'm recording this Thursday afternoon. In a few hours, the NHL is set to unveil the first ro- wave, I should, the first round, first wave, whatever you want to call it, of all stars, guys who are going to representing their teams. It's first 32, I believe, that is what the NHL is calling it, where each team is getting one representative at minimum. A number of teams will send more than one because, frankly, you know, there are a lot of teams who have multiple players deserving of being in an all star game. Excuse me here while I take a sip of water. So as we talk about the All-Star game, I'm going to take a moment here and pull up my graphic that I made, because if I had to pick who I wanted to send to the All-Star game, I would probably send a different group than who the NHL is going to pick. There are different considerations here, different factors at hand. Okay, I have my graphic done. So I'm going to rattle through all 32 teams who I think the NHL is going to send and if I'd agree or disagree. So for the Ducks, I would say Mason McTavish. I know a lot of people would say Trevor Zegers. Trevor Zegers has missed a lot of time. It'd be good to highlight McTavish, who's had a really strong second consecutive season out there in Anaheim. Arizona, Clayton Keller, no, no surprises there. Their most recognizable player from a smaller market. He's from Amer- He's an American. He's from Missouri. I imagine the NHL would send Keller again. For the Bruins, you could send a number of people. I would send David Poster knock he's one of the premier players in the entire league he's got the flair that the nhl desperately needs from its star players poster knock enjoys the attention the eye he enjoys the dramatics the flair the showmanship that goes along with an all-star game he's the type of guy you want in the skills contest on the saturday night for the Sabres, I said Owen Power. I know a number of people would probably argue ross mistaline who's leading defenseman in goals i think they should send power who is putting together a really solid season out there in Buffalo. Even if the team hasn't been particularly good, him and Dalene have both been pretty, pretty freaking outstanding. So if you can get power in there after sending Dalene last year, that's a good balance. For the Hurricanes, I have Sebastian Ajo, one of the premier two-way players in today's game. Uh, Not a world beater, but he's been an all-star a couple of times, somebody who more than deserving. If they send Svechnikov, that would be fine as well. For the Blue Jackets, Zach Wierenski bouncing back nicely from that injury that kept them out pretty much the entirety of last season. I know a lot of people would say, hey, they should probably send um, 
Adam Fantilli, the rookie from Michigan last year, who Michigan played college hockey at Michigan, really good player. Wierenski deserves to go, and you got to have a balance of forwards and defensemen to fill out these rosters. For the Calgary Flames, I would say Nazem Kadri. They probably could send Mackenzie Weger or Rasmus Anderson as well if it, a forward defenseman split comes down to it. But Kadri, he went last year to represent the Flames. He'll probably end up going again this year. For the Blackhawks, Connor Bedard, not no hesitation, no doubt in my mind, the most obvious layup slam dunk of all time. That is wants to get its marquee players in front of a national audience, Connor Bedard fits the bill. For the Avalanche, you could send McCarr, you could send Ranton in, but I think the first choice for the Avalanche will be Nathan McKinnon. They can play up the relationship, his friendship with Sidney Crosby. He is one of the premier players in today's game, captain of a team, won a Stanley Cup, one of the real bona fide superstars within today's game. For the Dallas Stars, you could send a number of players. You could send Rupe Hinch. You could send Jason Robertson. For them, I put down Miro Heiskanen, the f- defenseman who has put together a really strong season, somebody who more likely than not will end up being a top five finalist for the Norris Trophy this season for best defenseman. In his debut season in Detroit, I have Alex Debrinkit representing the Red Wings. I know Dylan Larkin has gone a number of times to represent them. Most Sider has gone. Debrinkit is having a really strong season there i imagine the nhl will pick him i could see a world where they pick larkin because they want him for the skill stuff but the brinkin's probably going to flirt with 40 goals again oilers come on mcdavid's going dry sidles going maybe they sneak evan bouchard in there as well for the panthers you could send matthew kachuk but i i think Barkov deserves to go more more than Kachuk. I would not be surprised if the NHL sends both Brady and Matthew because they want to play up the the friendship that the Kachuks have with all the other American hockey players in the league. But I would send Barkov for the Kings. You could send a number of people here as well. I wrote down Kevin Fiala, who's been an all star a couple of times. You could send Kempe. You could send Dowdy. You could send Cam Talbot, even if you wanted to. I imagine the Kings will be a team that sends multiple people. This is the first one where I think I might really depart from the NHL, but I think the Wild should send Brock Faber, who's been one of the best defensemen in the entire league, not just rookie defensemen, one of the best defensemen in the entire league. He more than deserves to go. For for the Montreal Canadiens, Nick Suzuki, you could send Cole Caulfield as well. It's going to be one of those two guys for that team, I imagine. For the New Jersey Devils, Jack Hughes, no questions, no confusion, Nobody else on that team, really. Tyler Toffoli, maybe, if you wanted to argue, is the second representative for the Devils, but I don't think the Devils are going to get two this time around. For the Nashville Predators, has to be UC Saros. Yo, Roman Yossi has a good shot of being one of the second wave of players that get voted in by the fans, but I think Saros deserves to go and has to go. For the Islanders, you could send Matt Barzell. You could send Bo Horvat. I put down Noah Dobson having a really strong season. One of the archetype right-handed puck moving defensemen in today's game, really having a breakthrough season this year and kind of took took the leap that a lot of people expected him to last year. Just took a little bit longer than expected. For the Rangers, Artemi Panarin, who's playing out of his mind this season, really one of the driving forces of the Rangers' success. For the Senators, I imagine they will send Brady Kachuk or Tim Stutzla. I put down Jacob Chikrin, who has been outstanding, and the forward defenseman split needs to be a little more even. For the Flyers, Sean Couturier, uh, really nice bounce back season for the veteran who has missed a lot of time over the last number of years with some serious injuries. For the Penguins, Sidney Crosby. Enough said. For the Sharks, I said Tomas Hurdle, I think most deserving, their best player, one of the more recognizable players from that team, I imagine he goes. For the Kraken, I put down Vince Dunn. It could be Oliver Bjorkstrand. Vince Dunn, really solid two-way defenseman, one of the leading point getters at that position. For the St. Louis Blues, it could be Jordan Cairo. It could be Robert Thomas. I wrote down Jordan Cairo, center, really strong offensive game, one of the nice pieces in St. Louis that's going to hold it down in this transition period for them. 90 seconds to go. Let's get this done. For the Tampa Bay Lightning, Nikita Kucherov over a point per game. Could be Vasilevsky, could be Hedman, could be Stamkos, but I think Kucherov deserves to go. For the Leafs, Austin Matthews, could be Marner, could be Nylander. I don't think it could be Morgan Riley this year, but I imagine one of Marner or Nylander will also go with Austin Matthews. For the Canucks, a team that will likely have two or three guys. The I said Quinn Hughes, it could be Elias Pettersson, it could be Thatcher Demko, it could be Brock Besser. For the Vegas Golden Knights, I said Jack Eichel, could be Mark Stone, could be Petrangelo, could be any number of pieces. I think Jack Eichel deserves to go. For the Winnipeg Jets, who we just talked about in that first segment, if you heard the first segment, you will not be surprised to hear me say Connor Hallibuck deserves to be the Jets representative. Josh Morrissey, I do imagine, will be a second representative for the Jets. And just under the wire, I think the NHL is going to make Alexander Ovechkin go. He's going to get suspended for not going. 
and the Capitals are going to end up sending Dylan Strome, who more more than deserving of an all-star spot based on how he's played in Washington this year. And we will be right back to talk about what teams need to start taking action. The NFL regular season is wrapping up this week, and there is still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like same game parlays. You can use the Explore tab and find specific bets. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. You can set up teasers and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Hello, everyone, and thanks for hanging out with me on this Thursday afternoon. Hunter and I will be back next week to digest these rankings and start start setting you guys up for the stretch run of the hockey season because we talked about a few teams that have strung together nice recent form, like the Jets, like the Hurricanes, like the uh, – oh, my goodness, you almost heard me say the Islanders. Yuck. You <laughs> – a nice string of games together like the Canucks is the team I was going to say. And I'll be fair. I should be fair. The Islanders have started to round it out, look a little bit better over their last, I want to say, 10 to 15 games. They are. They really came out of the gate cold. They lost all those games in a row. You heard Hunter and I discuss them through the lens of, hey, when are they going to fire Lane Lambert? The Islanders are 3-2-2 three, two, and two in their last seven games. So, you know, not exactly world beaters, but over 500 if you want to talk about it from a points perspective but this idea i phrased it as who's running out of time to talk about it through the lens of who needs to make decisions and we could be talking about this from a devil's islanders leafs perspective of who needs to add or we could be talking about this from a flames crack in st louis blues perspective of team near the cut line Probably not going to be able to do enough to get over that cut line and to get the ball rolling. Because what slows the deadline down every year is teams not willing to accept they're out of the mix yet. That is what typically keeps the deadline from evolving, developing, whatever word you want to use to describe it earlier. Teams don't want to wave that white flag before the end of January. The deadline isn't for another, you know, month and a half, two months. We're in the first week of January. It's the fourth day of the year. The deadline's not till the first week of March. There's plenty of time for somebody to go on their St. Louis Blues run. Everybody talks about how the Blues were in last place in January, and they dragged themselves out of the gutter, went on a crazy run, won the Stanley Cup. Eventually, you do actually have to start winning games if you want to go on that run. There are a lot of teams that are going to say, hey, we're not that far out of it. All we got to do is string together, you know, four and seven, four and six, and we're right back in the thick of it, especially in some of these divisions where the standings are a little more compressed and it's easier to make moves. A lot of teams still have several division games left where you have those four point swing games. So team like the Devils, who is yet to play the Hurricanes, who are ahead of them in the standings, that's a team that definitely has to make a move. I think if the Devils wait much longer to get a goaltender in there, they risk the they run the risk of bringing in a goalie, not giving him enough time to get situated, and either A, missing the playoffs altogether, or just not clicking. You think about Ryan Miller getting traded to the Blues a number of years ago from the Sabres. Ryan Miller was having a great season. The Blues were a really good team in the regular season, but he never got comfortable, and they didn't get it together in time. It just Sometimes it happens when you are a goalie that gets moved at the deadline. It is hard to get situated in a new environment because goaltending is so environment-based. You can say all you want about, well, if he's good, he should be good no matter what. But on a fundamental level, that position is tied to your environment. You can only do so much. You heard uh, Jacques Martin, the uh, Senators coach, talk about this a few weeks ago when he first got the job, that we've the Senators have brought in a number of different goalies over the years, and Cam Talbot comes to mind. They swapped him for Gustav, Philip Gustafson, who's the wild goalie now, two, last, uh, two summers ago. 
And Cam Talbot really struggled in Ottawa. And Cam Talbot went to L.A. this offseason. And Cam Talbot's been pretty good. I mean, one of the reasons the Kings are where they are in the standings is because they've got pretty consistent goaltending. And if a coach in the NHL is saying, hey, yeah, these guys are good, but we have to help our guys out. We have to pick them up. Then maybe we can have a little bit more understanding. And, hey, this is a really hard position. If the environment is that important, we want to get this guy into our environment as soon as we possibly can. Comes to mind for the Leafs as well. The Leafs put Ilya Samsonov on waivers this past week. The Oilers need to solidify their goaltending if they want to be able to go on a run. You look around the league. Excuse me, had to hit a yawn there. You look around the league right now, and there is a real... I don't want to say a vacuum because there are a number of teams that are very good. The Bruins, Vegas, the Rangers, the Stars, the Avalanche, the Kings. There are a lot of teams that are really good. But there is room for more guys at that table. There is room for a team to go on a run here, whether it be somebody like Toronto to get themselves out of that middle class where they've been a lot of this season, or if it's a team like Maybe it's Nashville. Maybe it's Arizona. Maybe it's one of those plucky teams. Maybe it's the Flyers, you know, a team that's over exceeded expectations this entire season. And instead of regressing, they take another step. And hey, maybe a young guy pops off. Maybe Owen Tippett really makes a big leap for the Flyers. Maybe somebody like Matthias McKelly or Logan Cooley for the Coyotes makes a leap. And suddenly we're talking about the Coyotes pushing for a third spot as opposed to one of the two wild cards. It's not out of the realm of possibility. There is enough time left in this season that everybody still thinks they're in the mix. Unless you're like the Blackhawks, the Sharks, the Senators, the Blue Jackets, the Ducks, the Sabres. Like even the Canadians aren't that far out of a playoff spot. Now, I'm not saying the Canadians are the team that's going to come out of nowhere to go on a run, but the standings are close enough, condensed enough that it wouldn't be impossible for them to go on a crazy run. I think that will just about do it for today's episode of the Locked On NHL Power Rankings. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts over on YouTube as well. Hunter and I will be back next week to unpack the week that was in the NHL. Until then, be safe out there. I'll see you guys next week.